Well hello everyone and a huge welcome back as we return to our snowy viking village for another epic build. It's been quite a while since we visited the village but I've got an incredible tutorial today that I've been working very very hard on as today I'm finally going to show you how to build a viking stave church. It's been very heavily requested since we started these viking tutorials and I finally got round to making it. If you're new to the series then a huge welcome, you can check out the rest of the snowy viking village tutorials out on the channel and press that subscribe button if you, so you don't miss the next one as well. I'm loving how the village is looking so far and I'm so sorry it's taken so long to get this tutorial out. I've been so so busy outside of YouTube but we're finally back so please forgive me. So I think for today's build up here on this cliff will be the perfect location to build our stave church. It's towers over the village and we can build a weaving path up to the entrance. It'll look amazing in the landscape and really pull the whole village together. But first we need to get rid of these spruce trees so let's get chopping. So I'm going to chop down most of these spruce trees on top of the cliff and flatten out the land ever so slightly just to make way for our rather large stave church. Don't worry, we will replant some of these trees afterwards just to make sure that the church looks settled in the landscape and it fits in its natural environment but for now, so we can see what we're doing, we'll get rid of them. It took me quite a while to figure this build out, a lot of experiment, experimenting and, and looking at reference images and stuff like that, but I think it's turned out pretty good and it really fits well with the rest of the style of our village. So now we've cleared out some space, let's see what materials that we're going to need to collect to build our stave church. So guys, to build our Viking Stave Church, we're going to need some cobblestone, some regular stone, some cobblestone and mossy cobble stairs, some cobble, mossy and regular stone slabs, some spruce planks, some stripped dark oak logs, some stripped spruce logs, some spruce stairs, some barrels, some spruce fences, some spruce signs, some deep slate tiles, some deep slate bricks, some deep slate stairs in both tiles and bricks, some deep slate slabs, some deep slate walls, some path blocks, some spruce trap doors, some chains, candles and some lanterns. Quite a lot of stuff, but all this stuff is quite easy to acquire, so let's jump straight into the build. So first of all we're going to need a 19 by 19 block area shown here in red and then on the front and the two sides of the red square we're going to add a 2 by 7 block area shown here in yellow then at the back of the red square shown in blue we're going to add a 6 by 11 block area then in the centre behind that a 3 by 9 block area shown here in green and then in orange a row of 7 blocks and in pink a row of 5 and then finally in cyan a 3 block area. Feel free to pause the video here if you want to mark out the area in your world. So now we're going to grab our cobblestone and we're just going to fill in the entire area to create a nice strong base for our stave church. Once we've filled the entire area in with cobblestone, we're going to knock out random blocks and replace the cobble with some regular stone to add some variety and texture to the church floor to make it look like people have been walking around in it for years. Next, on the front and two sides sticky out sections, we're going to add four barrels on each one like so, with a gap in between each barrel. Now we're going to add a further 14 barrels in the shown positions. This is to create the base for each of our log columns. Next, grab some spruce planks and just join up all the barrels to create a one block high wall all the way around the base, apart from in the center of the three protruding sections on the front and the two sides, to create three one block wide entrances. Now, on top of every single one of the barrels, we're going to add three stripped dark oak logs to create our outermost wooden columns. There should be 26 columns all together. Next, grab some more stripped dark oak logs and add a row of them horizontally on top of the spruce planks you've just placed. Do this all the way around apart from on the curved shape area at the back of the build like so. Now we're going to use some spruce fence posts and we're just going to place two of them on every other horizontal stripped dark oak log like so. 
only place two sets in the larger gaps in front and the side walls and one set in the rear two gaps like shown here. On the rearmost curved area of the structure, we're going to build up the walls with spruce planks up to the same height as the stripped dark oak columns like so to create this nice semicircle shaped room. Now in the shown positions, two blocks diagonally into the centre of the large corners, we are going to build a 10 block high column of stripped dark oak. Do this four times in the four corners of the main central square. Then we're going to build a further six columns of 10 stripped dark oak logs in the shown positions. These columns should be five blocks in distance from the columns in each corner that we've built in the previous step. Now using some deep slate tile stairs, we're going to pop an upside down stair either side of the front entrance like so. Then create a row of right way upstairs all the way around the build at this level, making sure to add those two upside down stairs on each of the two side entrances as well. I chose to use deep slate for the roof of this build because I thought we needed to break up the dark oak stairs that we've used in the rest of the village and in all the reference images I used, stave churches tended to have dark tile like roofs so I think the deep slate works really really well. Once you've gone all the way around, pop a deep slate tile block on top of each of the upside down stairs and then create another row all the way around the build, but this time using full deep slate tile blocks and this time one block further into the centre, on top of the strip dark oak columns and the fence posts. Remember to add one on top of each upside down stair on the two side entrances too. On the front entrance, we're going to add two deep slate tile stairs facing outwards like so and then in between them add an upside down stair facing outwards like so to create a sort of archway. Repeat this on the two side entrances as well. Next, we're going to grab more deep slate tile stairs and add another row all the way around on top of the full deep slate tile blocks, making sure to join the rows onto the two stairs we've placed in the previous step. Then on the front and two side entrances, we're going to add a stair in the shown position and just add a deep slate tile slab behind it. Beautiful. Now add a full deep slate tile block onto the back of that slab and continue to create a row all the way around the build like so. You get the picture now, we're starting to create a sloped roof. And next, you guessed it, we're going to add one last row of deep slate tile stairs all the way around again on top of our full blocks. Now, moving back inside the structure, we're going to add two more 10 block high columns of stripped dark oak. Build these five blocks in from the rearmost high columns in the shown positions. Next, using more stripped dark oak logs, we're going to join each column up by adding a beam all the way around at the same height as our highest deep slate tile stairs on the eighth block up of our stripped dark oak columns. Now, in the gaps that we've made above the front and two side entrances, we're going to fill those gaps with spruce planks like shown. Mm -hmm. 
Then on the front two corners of the little spruce platform we're going to add two columns of two stripped dark oak logs, add two spruce planks behind each one and add three fence posts in the middle of them. Do this on the two side entrances too. Now using more spruce planks we're just going to fill in the gaps like so by building a two block high wall all the way around. For the interior walls we're going to fill in the two side gaps on each side with spruce planks like shown and then in the central gap we're going to add two rows of spruce planks at the top and underneath we'll add a supporting beam with stripped dark oak logs like so to create a nice large doorway. Then we're simply going to repeat this process on the remaining three interior walls. Now we're going to create another four strip dark oak columns, this time 17 blocks high. Build these in the shown positions two blocks diagonally in from each corner of the central square room. These columns will be the start of our central tower. Now moving around to the rear part of the church, we're going to build a two block high wall of spruce planks all the way around the curve like so. Make sure none of the spruce planks overlap any of the deep slate stairs below. Now to create the next layer of roofing we're going to add a row of deep slate tile stairs all the way around making sure there's an extra one popping out of the front either side of the front and the two side windows like so. Next just repeat the process but this time with full deep slate tile blocks and one block in towards the centre just like we did on the lower roof section. Then again with some more deep slit tile stairs. Then in the centre of the front and two side windows add an upside down stair like so. Then at the rear of the build pop a deep slit tile slab above this gap to fill it in. Back to the front and two side windows we're going to add a right way upstairs followed by a row of three slabs to neaten off the ridge of each little roof. Grabbing our full blocks of deep slate tiles again we're going to create another row all the way around at the same level as the slabs we've just placed and then finally go back around with another row of deep slate tile stairs like shown to finalise another layer of roof. To fill this little gap in at the back of the church just add a row of stripped dark oak like so and then just fill in the remaining space with some spruce planks. Then connect up the large stripped dark oak columns with some more horizontal beams at the same level as the highest deep slate stairs as shown here. We're now going to connect these horizontal beams to the floor by adding some tall columns of stripped dark oak in line with the ones on the interior walls. Add two columns on each of the four sides of the interior like so. Then using more spruce planks just fill in the gaps in between each column with four three block high walls. Thank you. 
On the rearmost part of the build, we're going to add a row of three slabs like so, add a three block high column of stripped dark oak, and then fill in the gaps once again with some spruce planks. Beautiful. Now on the front wall, we're going to add two block high row of spruce planks, which is nine blocks long. Then on top of that, add another two block high wall again, this time seven blocks long. Then on top of that one, repeat the two block high wall, but only five blocks long. And then again, but only three blocks long. And then finally, add two blocks on top of each other on the very tip top. Then repeat this shape on the rear side of the central square. To build the main roof, we're just going to add a row of 13 deep slate tile stairs along the side of the wall like so, and then add a row of 13 deep slate tile blocks above it like so. Then just repeat the process till we reach the top. Make sure to add some upside down stairs on the ends of each side of the roof just to neaten the edges up like so. Then once you've done one side, move over to the other side and do the exact same thing until you have a beautifully formed pointed roof like this one. Then at the top, add an upside down stair in the gap and a right way up one on top of that one like so. Do that on each end and join them up with a row of slabs to create a nice, neat ridge. If you're anything like me, double check that you've added those upside down stairs on the edges because I forgot. Back round to the rear of the church, we're going to add two blocks of spruce planks and we're just going to simply repeat the roof building process we've just done but on a smaller scale. back up to the main large roof we're going to find the center slab and we're going to knock out five slabs like so then we're going to knock out three rows of blocks below this to create this gap in the roof in the gap we're going to build four columns of stripped dark oak each of them four blocks high then fill in the front and back gaps up with some spruce planks Then on the two side gaps we're going to add two rows of spruce planks, then a row of spruce fence posts, then another row of spruce planks. Do this on both the right and left side of the section. Now on the front and the back walls of the section we're going to add a two block high wall of spruce planks, three blocks long, and then add two blocks on top of each other in the centre of each one. Now again grab those deep slate tile blocks and stairs and repeat the roof building process again until we reach the top and we've formed a nice neat small roof. Now we've built quite a few roofs now so it wouldn't surprise me if you were now a roof building professional. Next, make another gap in the centre of this smaller roof, but only three blocks wide and one block deep. Add another four columns of stripped dark oak in each corner, each one three blocks high, and fill in the front and back gaps with three spruce planks. On the two side gaps, add a spruce stair, and then an upside down stair, and then a block like so. We're now going to create a row of deep slate tile stairs all the way around the top of the square we've just built and then add four deep slate tile blocks in the shown positions. Add 
add four deep slate slabs in between each one like this and then add two full blocks in the middle. Add four stairs like so and then add another full block on top in the centre like so. Finally add two deep slate walls on top of each other like so in the centre to create that lovely little peak. Now on each of the little roofs above the entrance and the windows we're going to add a little upside down stair and then a right way up stair on top of that to create that traditional viking flare. Do this on all of the ridge edges, there should be 11 in total. Now the church is looking pretty good but I think we can make it look better by adding some texture to the wooden walls. To do this just go around the whole building and replace some of the spruce planks with stripped spruce logs and spruce stairs. Finally go around and add some random rows of spruce signs to make it look like some planks are loose adding age and history to the build. Now we're going to add some age and texture to the roof by going all the way around and replacing random blocks of deep slate tile stairs with some deep slate block stairs. It's quite tedious to do this but I think you'll really think it's worth it when you've finished. Once you've replaced random stairs in the roof go around again and do the exact same thing but this time with the full blocks. Beautiful. Next for a bit of exterior terraforming we're just going to go around the base of the church with some various stone blocks including mossy blocks and create a rocky, roughy, rough, roughy, rough edge to make it look like the church is built on some rocks and it really helps to the build to fit into the natural surroundings and doesn't just look like it was plonked there. Now it's time to build the pathway up to the church entrance, we're just going to create a more shallow slope down the hillside using some slabs and path blocks to create an easy route to the front door. We're going to take the path all the way down to the main village area and then decorate the path with some shrubbery, add some trees back in and add some lighting with lanterns and candles. Now for the interior, for the ceiling I'm just going to cover it up with some wooden panelling and then add some candles to light the place up. Candles really add atmosphere and aren't too overpowering like torches or lanterns. We're then going to add some interior balcony and add our signature viking banners to the walls. We're then going to create an area of worship for our Vikings to pray and speak to Odin and their many other Norse gods. We're going to add more candles for atmosphere and add in some details like barrels and chests. We're also going to texture up the floor a little bit more by adding some path blocks to make it look even more worn down. That ladies and gentlemen is our epic Viking Stave Church complete. I'm so 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 pleased with how it's turned out and I've been so excited to show you guys this build. It's taken so long to make this video and I'm so pleased you can all finally build it in your Viking villages. The church really really brings the village together and looks so ominous in the snow with the shaders on in the distance. It's, it's just, I love it so much. It's definitely my favourite build in the village so far. So let me know down below if it's your favourite too and don't forget to show me your versions of sending me uh, screenshots on Twitter or join the Discord and post it in there for everyone to see but again I'm so sorry about how long you've waited for this video but I hope it's been worth the wait I think we can only fit a few more builds into the Viking village so let me know what you'd like to see next and don't forget to press that subscribe button guys so you don't miss another video and press that like button too if you did actually like the video it really really helps the channel so guys I'm afraid that's all I've got time for today so until next time whale watchers tatty bye